further apply or and join this uh, room. So I will start. I will uh, shortly first present our faculty. And first I will present myself. I'm uh, Maya Klun. Uh, I'm professor here at, at Faculty of Public Administration, and I'm also a head of PhD studies at our faculty. And of course, uh, later on, I will present PhD studies, but first I will present our faculty. Uh, our faculty is the leading in the field of public administration. That means that there are some private uh, faculties also in the public administration, but our is the leading one and uh, the one that have the better network. And it's part, of course, of University of Ljubljana, which is very important. Uh, our studies are quite interdisciplinary. That means that we cover management, uh, finance, law, administration, informatics, and so on. So quite a bunch of uh, courses in different fields. And we are quite old, if I can say. It's a more than 60 years old faculty, so with a good and nice tradition. Um, usually we have around 1,000 students uh, in all levels of, of study. And as you can see in some pictures, we have really nice classrooms uh, and equipment. And if I um, go further, uh, we have a European accreditation for several of our uh, study programs. This is for uh, one bachelor, one master degree program. And um, uh, okay, and something it's, I don't know, uh, I please that administration, uh, administrative staff answer the questions in chat, please. Uh, and uh, what it's very important that you know, we cooperate with several uh, faculties uh, at different universities all over the world. Uh, as you can see, we have around 80 international um, uh, networks, uh, universities, and usually we receive around 40 Erasmus students each year. But uh, for PhD studies, we have also four students and for the master de pre degree program that, are, uh, that will be presented later, uh, there is also English courses and uh, foreign students. Uh, we have also a good consulting and training center. That means that um, some career development or uh, some special seminars and so on, where you can uh, further um, go in deep in practice in Slovenia in the field of public administration. Uh, we have also very good uh, scientific background, uh, especially in different research. And uh, in some cases, we also ask students to join some research projects and programs. And uh, very important when you will be in the how to say higher level of education, then uh, it's good to know that also we publish a, a journal called Central European Public Administration Review, uh, which is included in Emerged Social Science Index, which is very important for publishing in scientific field. And uh, that's all for the short presentation of our faculty, maybe just uh, shortly, uh, because some of you um, said that you're interested in bachelor program, but I have to say that uh, all bachelor programs at our faculty are in Slovene language. So you will have to know Slovene first uh, before you enroll to these uh, programs. We have university study program, professional study program in administration, and uh, one join um, bachelor program together with faculty of computer science where uh, par uh, part of the study is uh, in, at our faculty and par part of the studies is in a faculty of computer science. But as mentioned before, these bachelor programs are only in Slovene language. Uh, these are the enrollment numbers. Uh, so how many students we enroll in different uh, programs uh, at the bachelor level, of course. And this uh, professional study program we also have for uh, part-time students. That means that uh, you can enroll online. So the, the whole course is online, only the exams are in uh, the classrooms. And that's all for the bachelor program. I will not go further because we will be run of time if you will have questions further. And now I will uh, give word to Professor Aristonic. Uh, he's a head of the master degree program and he will present the program. Okay, thank you. I hope we can hear each other. Great. So uh, thank you for uh, 
this presentation and of course uh, now i will continue with the presentation of our uh, next uh, program that's a master degree program administration public sector governance and as you have already heard uh, so we have all three levels of the programs and uh, i hope you are interested also for this second level second cycle program um, as the uh, title of the pro or already pronounced uh, it's uh, focused on the public governance um, so uh, in the public governance uh, sector and of course administration so the program is usually last two years so uh, four se semesters uh, in total you will uh, get 120 uh, credit points and uh, at the end of this study you will um, achieve and you will be entitled to use uh, professional title so magister or magistrica upravnih vet it's in slovene of course or uh, you, you usually use it in slovene but uh, that's a master of uh, administrative uh, science so uh, this is regarding the title uh, as far as uh, the program uh, concerns and why you would decide to study in our program is that this program is for sure uh, we, 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 we can be confident that this is the best master degree program in the field of public administration in Slovenia, which is uh, also recognized by the international uh, institutions and accreditation. It was already mentioned before that uh, this program has APA accreditation, so uh, European accreditation for the public administration. And uh, this program is also a member of the European um, so network of the best uh, programs uh, in, in the field of public administration, public policy. Uh, in 2019, it was also ranked among 150, 150 uh, best programs in the field of uh, public administration in the world, according to the Shanghai uh, rankings. Uh, one of the main advantages of this program is that it's uh, really uh, interdisciplinary oriented. Uh, so uh, there is a wide range of uh, courses related to the or economics, uh, management, organization, uh, politics, uh, also in informatics, uh, law. So you, you will get a variety of uh, knowledge, which is uh, important for your uh, further uh, uh, work in uh, public administration institutions. Uh, when you will finish this program, you will be able to work in different uh, areas of public administration at national, regional, local level, but nevertheless also at the supra national level, uh, so at the EU or even uh, in, in the, let's say, United Nations institutions so, or other world institutions. So uh, you will get skills for all these this kind of uh, po po positions and uh, especially of course in the public administration area but also you will be able to work also in the non-profit organizations uh, we have a very individual approach so um, as was already mentioned uh, we are not very uh, big large university uh, faculty so uh, we we can focus and uh, there are especially in the second year there are small groups and you can uh, the, the quality of studies uh, uh, quite high so and uh, this is also of course as i mentioned uh, confirmed by our uh, accreditations uh, as far as uh, application uh, concerns and about the program what's your uh, task uh, if we already uh, decided to, to join us next year i hope you already did so uh, you have to be uh, careful about these dates so the first date it was mentioned before in the previous presentations from the university that uh, you have to be uh, no later than uh, 15th of September. You have to apply uh, electronically via EVH uh, system. And, um, but that's the date for the uh, citizens of the EU or Slovenia. However, the, uh, if you don't have EU citizenship or Slovenian citizenship, so uh, you have to uh, apply no later than 31st July. So be careful about these uh, deadlines. Uh, if there are some further information, you can join us also in May. There will be another uh, information um, a day on 26th of May. Uh, the semester will start 1st of October in Ljubljana. Uh, what is uh, 
um, let's say new uh, from the last year and also this year that the program will uh, be uh, implemented online so uh, this program is implemented online uh, however you are welcome to be in Ljubljana uh, to have consultations also in uh, face to face uh, the duration it was mentioned 60 credit points each year and uh, there is no tuition fee for the Slovenian or EU citizens however for non-EU uh, citizens uh, it is 3000 euros per academic year and uh, there are as for other uh, similar programs there is a one uh, I mean general enrollment condition that's that you have a diploma or that you graduated first cycle study program in Slovenia or in or abroad so any further information, you, you can um, contact our uh, student office, uh, so they will be, uh, um, they will kindly respond to your uh, questions uh, if uh, needed. So th this is re regarding the, uh, some technical, of course, uh, additional technical uh, information is uh, what you have to uh, submit when you uh, enroll. So there is, as already mentioned, it is online web portal called EVH. So uh, please be, be uh, um, uh, diligent about this so that uh, only online application is um, possible. And you have to scan your uh, diploma, you have to scan your diploma supplements and chronicle descriptions of your previous uh, completed uh, education. And of course, do not forget about copying your ID uh, so that uh, this is all necessary documents you have to upload into the system. As far as uh, concerns about the slots, uh, there are no, uh, let's say, uh, the slots are quite, uh, I mean, uh, it is not so narrow, so you, it, is, it is very easy to apply, so uh, you usually, there is no line, however, I, I would uh, uh, encourage you to apply as soon as possible, so uh, especially for the candidates from the non-EU uh, member states, so as there are uh, less uh, slots available, so it's 22 slots for uh, full-time or uh, 18 slots for the part-time uh, students, so uh, be careful about uh, these numbers, and even without Slovenian citizens, there are very few slots, so only two, so uh, if you are in this category, please uh, uh, do hurry. Uh, about uh, some uh, structure of the program, just to have a clue about uh, the courses. So uh, as I, it was already mentioned, two years, uh, 60 grade points, we have uh, in the first year um, set of eight uh, um, core uh, courses and uh, there are also um, some compulsory elective courses which you can elect according to the to, to your uh, preferences. So the whole courses are, are related to the economics, to the management, to the um, law, to, to the informatics, uh, also to the politics. So uh, it is, uh, as I already mentioned, multidisciplinary, also interdisciplinary approach uh, involved in this study. In the second year, uh, you can, uh, actually you cannot because uh, in English version, there are only one track, only one model uh, at this mo at this uh, particular moment. So you, uh, this model is called public governance in the EU. So uh, it is uh, oriented to the EU uh, topics uh, about the policy, about the uh, sustainable development or our public finance in the European Union, and also uh, course related to the uh, in informatics. So uh, you then, these are um, um, specialization courses. However, you can choose also additional two, you must choose additional two elective courses at our institution or institution abroad. And uh, this is, uh, these courses are, uh, you know, there are a wide range of courses, uh, again, from the, uh, finance, EU finance, EU politics, uh, then uh, from the human rights or so law courses, uh, uh, administrative courses like public services, tax procedure uh, law, uh, tax system, and so on. So there are also uh, uh, HRM uh, courses, so uh, human resource uh, management courses. So you have uh, really uh, uh, wide range of courses to elect. And of course, uh, we are very happy that our students are usually um, I mean, they 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 get jobs. Uh, they are uh, highly employable after finishing this uh, 
um, this program, and uh, this is also uh, reflected uh, by, uh, let's say, um, stu by, stu by students' uh, reflection, uh, which is usually uh, very positive. And I, of course, uh, uh, now um, kind of invite you to hear some of our students' uh, reflection. So here you can see first, uh, it was already uh, presented for our uh, alumni student, uh, Gregor Rudolf, uh, who, is, uh, who, um, who really recommends uh, this uh, study or this program for you. However, now you, you can hear also from our current students also uh, some feedbacks or some uh, reviews. So first, Alexander Jovanovic. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alexander. I am a second semester student of the Public Sector Governance Master's Program at the Faculty of Administration. And I'm here to share my experience with everybody about how the whole thing has been so far. Um, I started the program in autumn 2020, the so-called COVID semester, and I really wasn't sure what to expect um, because I knew that we would almost certainly be online. And the very reason why I chose the program was because it was very practice oriented as opposed to some other programs that I've been accepted to and that I was considering also in the field of public administration. Um, but I was very pleasantly surprised with the course composition and the course content. I also appreciated that all the classes were scheduled after about 4, 430 because as it turned out, all the students uh, had other things to do, had their own jobs, their own side projects, let's say. Um, and I think this was very um, useful for master's level students. Um, the quality of the courses too, of the lectures, of the textbooks they used, um, I was really able to learn a lot. And I guess the most important thing is that everybody was very open to cooperate with you. If you had a problem or a question, if you're coming into public administration from a different field, such as me, for example, um, the professors were really ready to, to give you additional information, additional knowledge, etc. Um, and also, everybody had a lot of understanding for what the students have been going through due to the whole COVID pandemic. Um, so, all in all, I was very, very impressed by what I got here. And I guess to sum the whole program up, I would say flexibility and quality would be the main two words that I would use at this point. So maybe we'll see each other next year. Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Sara. I'm coming from Bosnia and Herzegovina, and I'm a student of a first year for Master's Studies, Public Administration. My educational background was quite a bit different than my current studies, but that did not create an obstacle for me to proceed with my education. So my future colleagues, if you are facing the very same doubts, fear, or an issue, don't. You will be just fine. The main reason why I chose this program was because I wanted to learn all about government, digitalization, public administration, procedures, everything that is related to the public sector. Regarding the COVID-19 situation, unfortunately, we did not have this experience in the classroom, but our online classes and education and knowledge was on the very same level with the quality as well. So my future colleagues, I would like also to share with you that our professors are very welcoming and always ready to help and assist. The very same is for the university staff as well. I would like to invite you to join us to our university, not to be afraid of something new or something unknown, because you will gain so much knowledge, so much experience, that it will help you with your professional development in the future, especially if you decide to stay within the public sector. So thank you, uh, Alexander, you finished. <laughs> okay, yes, as, you, you. as you can see, you can contact our, um, our study office and they will provide you further, uh, further notice or information. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask in the chat if you want or raise a hand and ask it loudly so that we can answer to your questions as well. Uh, in continue, I will present uh, PhD studies at our faculty. 
so me again. Uh, these uh, joint PhD studies are governance uh, and economics in the public sector. Why I said joint? Because it's together with University of Rijeka at fac uh, and Faculty of Economics and Business. So this is a joint program. That means that uh, you will have professors from both institutions. Uh, the enrollment slots are 20 uh, in Slovenia and 20 in Croatia. And when you finish these studies, you will be um, a doctor, uh, uh, we call it in Slovene, of course, but in Croatia, it will be put it, uh, in uh, as PhD student in the field of social sciences. So uh, this is because of special Croatian um, regulation. So if we go further, um, uh, how it's organized. Uh, uh, I can say that half of the courses are at our faculty and half of courses are at University of Rijeka. Since last two years, most of the, uh, most of the lectures was online. Uh, now, this year is the first year after two years that we started again to have lectures uh, in the classrooms. But the problem is that uh, we have this year a lot of foreign students it is not a problem, of course, but uh, we have to, how to say, manage um, the wishes of both the Slovenian and foreign students and those foreign students that will not come to Slovenia. Uh, usually now we do it in this way that, uh, in, that we have students in the classroom and at the same time also uh, we provide this, the same lectures online, so so-called hybrid system. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to, how to say, to uh, discuss more because you are absent or because you are online. Uh, so if it's possible, do come to Ljubljana when the lectures are going on. Uh, since our colleagues from Rijeka at the moment decided to have online lectures uh, still, so the lectures of uh, University of Rijeka is now uh, still going on online through the different channels. Um, and the exams are taking place at the faculty. And uh, if the lectures were online, then of course you have to uh, you have to also have exams online because part of exams is uh, practically paperwork, and part of the exams are also written exams, especially in the first uh, study year. Uh, so you can choose uh, whatever you want in the field of uh, public administration or public governance or good governance in the public sector uh, since the program really offer you possibilities for specialized in the field you are interested in uh, and most of the students already are in very high places in their uh, workplaces so we practically don't have students without a job uh, which makes it more difficult to do the studies because you have to go to the work and at the same time study a lot. Uh, the main problem we see uh, during the program now is that most of the students come from, um, how to say, they have a long uh, practical experience, uh, but at the same time, uh, they don't used to think uh, in administrative level, uh, in the science level, uh, so that means that you have to switch your thinking from practical issues to scientific issues. And this is the main obstacle in the first year so that you adapt to different thinking, to, to think more about theory, uh, research questions, hypotheses, uh, methodology, and so on. So Polona, further, please. Um, application period is time is still the September the 9th so it seems that now it's a lot of time left but uh, believe me it's not because you have to fulfill uh, several um, documents before uh, maybe before we go to these documents uh, we will have also on uh, 26 May at, uh, at, the, uh, at the faculty information day that in, in person so you can come and ask questions personally uh, tuition fee is 11,000 euros for all three years. Uh, of course, you pay each year separately, as you can see. And each year, if you fulfill, um, if you fulfill obligation of co-financing or uh, the conditions for co-financing, that means that your previous grades are at the level of uh, 80% or B. I think it's B was before when the University of Ljubljana present uh, how the grading is um, 
how to say, uh, translated to our grades, uh, I think that you have to have at least 80% successful rate in previous studies. That means in bachelor and master degree level. Uh, and if you fill this for the first year, uh, then uh, you are possible to get co-financing of tuition fee. Uh, how, uh, how to say how big this co-financing will be it depends on the number of students, uh, not only at uh, faculty, but also at University of Ljubljana as a whole. And on that it depends um, how high this co-financing will be. I can say from the previous years that this range was uh, between 73%. Uh, for example, this year is 93% co-financing. That means quite a big uh, co-financing. Uh, other part you should cover yourself. And for the second and third year, even you don't, uh, if you now at the moment, you do not uh, fulfill conditions for co-financing in the first year. If you gradually go to the second year, then you fulfill the obligation for co-financing. That means that if you go directly, then after the first year, go directly to the second year, you will uh, fulfill conditions for co-financing at least for the second and the third year then. So don't be afraid if the first year is not the year where you can be co-financed. Uh, if you have any further question about this, um, then you can ask uh, through the email. Okay, and if I go to these documents, so why I said that it's very uh, necessary that you start to think about that now, uh, because before you enroll to the program, you already have to prepare some, how to say, um, uh, the topic, but this topic also should include the concept of your research that you plan to do. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not accepted that it will be on the high level or the finished uh, doctoral proposition, uh, but at least the topic should be um, quite well elaborated already. Uh, the concept, the structure of the concept, uh, you can find at our web page. So it should be a title, research methods, state of the art in the field of research, what, you, what uh, will be your research questions, which methodology, methodology you will use uh, to uh, find the results of, uh, for your research questions, and some literature already. Uh, so it's quite a lot of work. Uh, before and of course you have to contact the possible mentor the list of possible mentors you have on our web page uh, and in our web page you will also see which topics are covered by which uh, uh, mentor uh, and at that the first in the first uh, part you don't have to choose commenter as well it's enough to use mentor at the beginning and uh, when you discuss with this mentor, then the mentor should um, sign the agreement that uh, he or she is able or willing to be your mentor. And then you have this all, how to say, enrollment documents connecting to your PhD uh, research. Uh, after that, you, of course, you have to put on other documents that are that were already mentioned in the previous presentations. But nevertheless, here are the uh, major additional documents you have to fulfill if you enroll to our PhD studies. Uh, of course, you can if you cannot find a mentor or you are not sure which mentor could be okay, you can send email also to me or to uh, Podiplomsky uh, study office, and then uh, we will answer your help you to find a right mentor for your topic. Uh, and in, before you enroll, you also have to choose the uh, elective course, methodo methodological elective course in the first year. So further, Polona, please. Um, so the procedure is the same as was presented for bachelor and master degree. So I will not repeat myself. Uh, only these documents I mentioned before, it's additional, but all other documents are the same as for previous studies. So uh proof of previous uh, diplomas copy of an id and so on and so on i will not talk about that now the structure of the program as you can find probably also look at the, our web page uh, in the first year you have uh, two uh, compulsory courses one is more connected to public administration and the second more to economics 
And then you have to choose one of the methodological courses. It depends, you should discuss this with your mentor uh, in one way. And it's very important that you know that's the reason why you have already to think about your PhD research, because then you can find which course is better for your research. Uh, but don't worry if you're interested in also in the other course, we always provide students opportunity to attend both courses, but exams should be done only in the course uh, you choose. So you can listen both of them, but at the end, uh, to, you should pass an exam in this course which you choose. Okay, then uh, the part of PhD studies in both year is uh, individual research work. This individual research work means that you do your uh, PhD uh, thesis and uh, dissertation. The doctoral seminar in both years, uh, the first and the second year, means that you have to present some of your research uh, or state of the art or literature review or first uh, result, research results in different conferences, uh, scientific conferences, of course, or uh, publish them, an article or uh, or publish the chapter in the book and so on. So this is all uh, part of this doctoral seminar uh, and you, you have to do it in the first and the second year, but also before you finish the studies, one article should be published in the journals which are indexed in uh, Scopus or Web of Science. Uh, this is obligatory uh, before finishing PhD studies at our program. And in the second year, you have to choose one of the modules. Uh, in both modules, you have elective courses, which are not obligatory for models, but you can choose uh, at our list of the elective courses, or you can choose it whenever, wherever in Europe or elsewhere. Uh, at least they have to be in the range of PhD studies. As you can see, uh, one module is more public or public governance oriented and the second one is more economic oriented. Uh, what is very important that you take in mind is that because this is a joint uh, studies uh, in the second year, if you choose, for example, public governance module, then it means that you will have, it, it's recommended that you choose selective courses in University of Rijeka uh, or in other countries because uh, part of uh, credit points you have to receive in the partner, partner institution. You can also uh, get um, these points from doctoral seminars or individual research work, but this is details that uh, you will be faced with uh, when you enroll in the studies. Go further, please. In the third year, the whole time is uh, just to finish your PhD. So you have to write uh, your um, dissertation. And uh, this final doctoral seminar means that you have to publish this obligatory article and uh, present your uh, dissertation before the final, uh, the final presentation in, in the research forum. And at the end, you defend your doctoral thesis and you finish your studies. Um, as you can see, there is a bench of elective courses. Usually these elective courses are provided individually. That means that uh, because usually one maximum two students enroll in one elective course, that means that you contact the professor, uh, explain what is your topic, and then professors usually give you uh, some materials, literature uh, in connection with the course and to connect it to your topic in the uh, PhD thesis. And then you work so that you don't have double work, but you further research your topic from different points of view. So it's very important that usually uh, professors adopt to your uh, topics in your PhD studies. Okay. Any question already? This is a one impression of our doctoral student. Uh, she will finish probably now in two months or three months. So this year she will finish the study. So it's a good impression for us, of course. Uh, and which is very important that you know that students are uh, usually quite, um, I would say, fond of the, of the program. 
I hope you have the time to, um, to read it. And this is all for the presentation. If you have any question, just ask me. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, uh, the model of public governance also PhD in economics. Um, yeah, it, uh, it depends on, uh, because uh, in your um, diploma um, certificate, uh, both, uh, both uh, will be seen. Uh, it's not in economics, but it will be put it uh, for creation purpose. It will be put it that is a PhD in social science, it's not in economics. But of course, you can focus on economics uh, uh, topic because it's covered by the University of Rijeka more in detail in this, this field. And you can also choose mentor from, from their university, of course, not only from our faculty. Usually also um, students from Croatia enrolled in Slovenia, uh, mostly because of uh, possibility of co-financing, not for the other purposes. Okay, any other question? You can ask just uh, loudly, you don't have to write it down. At the moment, we have one student from Croatia. Uh, he's in the third year, so uh, quite a long way already. And yes, probably it's a difference because I don't know what the, I, I know that in uh, University of Rijeka, uh, for PhD can apply only those who finish uh, studies in economics, others cannot. Uh, so if you are from law faculty or something like that, then you cannot uh, join there. So you cannot apply there. Uh, but and in University of Rijeka, it is, it is not possible to ask for, um, for co-financing because co-financing is provided by Slovenian government and only Slovenia provides co-financing. What are the rules for other rules applying in Rijeka? Uh, I don't know, but the documents I explained before, like uh, topic explanation and so on, uh, should be also done in Rijeka. Any other question? No, everything clear? Not? <laughs> if you have any question, just send me an email or send email to uh, our uh, student office and they will provide you further, uh, further explanation or information you need. You have all forums and documents you need uh, quite simply explained in our, uh, on our web page. So you can elaborate it further or research further. Um, and also the content of the proposition is explained there. So it's not a, so big problem since, for example, this year uh, we have nine students enrolled and six of them are foreigners. So, and they all uh, have no problems at all to enroll to the program. No questions, everything clear? No. <laughs> of course you will have question after that, but it's very important before you enroll to PhD studies that you really, uh, really think about the topic you want to research. Uh, it's not usual, oh, okay, duration is three years officially, but if you don't finish in three years, uh, then of course you can prolong for a year. Now we are really trying to prolong our uh, studies to four years, uh, since till now only one student finished in three years, uh, and it's a part-time stu uh, study. That means that all lectures are in the afternoon, Lectures uh, you have in the first year. Uh, in the second year, it depends how much student enroll in which module. If, if there is only one or two students, then it's individually. If there are only consultations and uh, that's all. The uh, same is for elective courses. You contact the professor and you consultate with uh, him or her and uh, you decide on exam and so on. Uh, I must say also that in the first year you have written exams, but I think in the second year, you mostly prepare paper works and then discuss this with your uh, professor in the course. 
mentor help out is of course uh, they should mentors should help you with the elaboration of the thesis definitely because there's the reason why they are mentors <laughs> if you then you will not uh, need them any other question so maybe if you have some ideas about your topics uh, go to the web page uh, and look of the list of the um, Okay, no, if uh, Boris, no, because if you enroll in uh, Ljubljana, then you have to write in English or in Slovenian language. Uh, if you enroll in Croatia, then you can uh, write the, uh, the PhD in Croatian language. And then uh, you will have to provide a little bit longer um, summary in Slovenian language and in English language, but this is only uh, up to seven or eight uh, pages summary. But if you enroll in Ljubljana, um, you should write in Slovene or English language. Any other question? No. I can't see anyone, it's something new. Um, so, so pardon me, um, yeah. if I may ask a question. So um, lectures are in English or? Yes. Okay, thank you. Le uh, lectures are in English, uh, only if there will be only Slovenians, then it will be in Slovene or only, I don't know, in other, we didn't have, uh, Slovenians don't have lectures in Croatian language, sorry. <laughs> we usually have in Slovene or in English. Uh, and uh, the opposite goes to Croatian uh, professors. They uh, have lectures. It was fine out that if, uh, because in two years ago, we have only one foreigner. And um, in the module where uh, he didn't enroll, uh, the Croatian professors tried to lecture in Croatian language, but. At the end, we find out that Slovenians <laughs> didn't understand them right, so they uh, then lecture in English. So yeah, the lectures are now in English. Mostly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other question? No, everything clear? So thank you for that, for visiting us, uh, listeners, and welcome to ask questions through email, or contact me uh, through email and we can see each other or hear each other directly online via Zoom or whatever. Further. Okay. Have a nice day all. Bye.